Okay, I hope you can hear me. It's quite windy here. I'm out on the coast. And it's quite a stormy late February day. And the reason we're here is we're going to be foraging some shellfish, specifically mussels. Straight away, we're in. Now the tide's still on its way out. We've got about another hour of the tide going out. And it's a spring tide, which means it's going to go out quite far. Um, but as you can see here on these rocks behind me, we've already found quite a lot of mussels. Now, we're not going to take any of these. These are quite small. We're going to leave these here to do their thing. And hopefully a bit further out, as the tide progresses, we're going to find some of a, a better size. Like I say, it's very windy. I hope you can hear me. Sorry if you can't. The reason we're focusing on mussels today is because they're so prolific. There are saltwater and freshwater mussels, and chances are there's some growing very near you. And although we're talking about the saltwater blue mussels today, a lot of what I say is actually applicable to all the different types. So, as you can see, we've, we've already found our four, first load of mussels here. mussels all over this rock and that's what you're looking for you're looking for rocks that they can attach to there are a few species of mussels that attach to sand and other things but rocks is really your primary source now another key thing when you're foraging for mussels is tides you want to be stood somewhere that's underwater at high tide so it stands to reason you come at low tide and the high tides and low tides will come in and out at different distance at different times of the year. So you want to come in an ideal world on a spring or neap tide, which means when it's in, it's really in and when it's out, it's really out. And those tend to happen around new moons and half moons every couple of weeks. If you check online, there are, it's really easy to find the tide times locally to you. So we've come at low tide. The tide is still on its way out. Where I'm stood right now at high tide is completely underwater. And we've got about half an hour before the tide starts turning and coming back in. Which I think is perfect. So it gives us about an hour before the tide is exactly where it is again now. And in the next half hour, these ones just out here are going to become more available and we're hopefully going to find some nice big ones. Just down here are some decent sized mussels. They're not massive by any stretch, but they're definitely good enough size for the pot. So we're going to harvest quite a few of these. As you can see, we're, we can fill a good couple, couple of bags here and we're not going to do any damage at all to the ecology or the ecosystem, there's so many. Um, we're also not going to take any small ones, we're going to leave them behind to do their thing. And that's what we're here for today. So another key thing with mussels is their bivalve, which means that they can accumulate some nasty uh, toxic contaminants. Now, that's not a problem, so long as you stick to two or three key rules. So I've just seen a, a curlew in the distance. You see over there, gathering clams. So the, the rules for safely eating mussels are actually quite straightforward. Mussels, they're currently in the process of losing weight actually. So the best time to forage for them is in the autumn, when they've built up all their summer stores, ready to get them through the winter. They've now basically depleted. So it's not an ideal time, but they're still good. And part of this cycle of their life cycle and growth is what leads to one of the rules for safe foraging. So you only ever harvest mussels in a month with an R in it. Um, this is because they're a bivalve and they build up toxic pollutants within them 
that you don't want in your body during the summer months when they're busy processing their food at the most rapid rate you want to avoid them so that's rule number one rule number two is you don't take or subsequently cook any muscle when the shell is open and once you've cooked it you don't eat any that's still closed that ensures you're only taking healthy muscles the, the third point for um, safety of eating them is the water quality so it's really important that you check the water quality wherever you're going to harvest any shellfish or indeed any seafood but particularly the bivalves because they do as I say they they're a filter feeder so they take everything in now some of the key things about water quality are you know where is it is it, is it right near a big population hub um, obviously you'd prefer not um, and again it does tend to go up and down with the year but there's really no hard and fast rules for me to tell you how to check the water quality in your area you need to use your own common sense yeah. so if you stick to those rules you, you won't come across any harm the tide's pretty much all the way out now so I'm going to stay as close as I dare to the ocean and harvest a decent amount of these lovely lovely mussels um, just want to quickly show you I'm also not going to pass up the opportunity for the odd clam or cockle that I come across because they're even nicer in my opinion and here we are and you can see this is a typical mussel bed and as you can see they're all over these rocks all over the rocks behind us um, Here's a, another one, and we're going to start harvesting here. So, it should take me no longer than about half an hour or so, and I should get a decent carrier bag full. Now, when you pull them off the rocks, they should have little hairs coming out, like you see hanging out on the bottom of this one attached to that shell, and they're what anchors it to the rocks. So, that you can think of them almost like roots. They don't go into the rocks, they just cling on to the rocks. So when you pull the muscle, you'll have those hanging out. Now, in an ideal world, if you've got a spare hand, like I usually would, and if the weather's not quite as bad as it is today, I would pull them off now before I put them in the bag. But because it's so windy and quite inclement here, I'm just gonna put them all in like this. Now, the reason that I would normally take those off is of what happens next so what we're going to do we're going to rinse them and when you put these in the, the the clean water to rinse them they're going to process some of that water through them because as far as they're concerned the tides come in again and they're ready to start filtering and anything that's in that water is going to pass through them which isn't a problem that's what we want to happen we want the clean water to pass through them and basically flush them clean of any sand and what have you and that brings us to why I would normally clean this off as I go, because it's gonna muddy the water. But what I'll probably do is once I get back off the beach, I'll probably pull all the detritus off there, and then put them in the bag. And then when I get home, I'll just empty the bag into a bucket, um, and lit just for a couple of hours, and let them clean themselves a little bit. Now, you don't have to worry about that as much if the beach you're on is completely rocky, but as you can see behind me, beach here with the rocky outcrops so there are going to be little bits of sand inside the shell that we want to get out before we cook them in an ideal world now again it depends on how you're processing them at the other end if you were going to cook them and then separate them from their shells and do something else with them put them in a you know noodle salad or something then it's less important because you could do a lot of that work that end but if you're planning on cooking them in like a, which I will be in a white wine and garlic sauce and then serving them in the shell with the sauce you want to try and get rid of as much of that grainy sandiness before you cook them as always if you find these videos valuable there's several ways you can support them um, the easiest ones are just to like the video and subscribe to our channel we really appreciate that um, if you want to go a little bit further please share them find someone you think will be interested in them and uh, send them our way leave a comment down below let us know what you think um, we'll
we'll take requests and uh, see you on the next one. So there you go, I think that's everything you need to know about foraging and finding mussels. Good luck. As always, if you find these videos valuable, there's several ways you can support them. Just got some wet feet. And I just got some wet ankles. Ha, 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 ha.